Hello everybody, I am Vault Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Generation Selects Seacon Golf, aka Scaler. Now, this figure is on loan from my good friend Grim Lockamus, the Chrome Tyranno, and I've got a couple of these figures on loan, and I also bought two of them, so we're kind of doing an exchange where he's letting me borrow some, and then I'm going to give him the other two. Uh, that's I know that sounds a little weird, but we're good friends, and we kind of do this all the time. This figure is, well, it's a deluxe class figure, and it's a Generations Scaler, otherwise known as Gulf. Now, in the box, we have this nice little sleeve, which I will put off to the side as to not damage it. And then we open it up, and inside, we've got our Coelacanth with legs. And he comes with a tail sword, two guns, a fist, and some directions in the back. The first thing I want to call out about this new generation select line are the accessories. His hand is definitely different. It's got movable fingers, though they only have one joint at the top knuckle and a movable thumb for switching back and forth. I really like this change. I would have liked to have seen other, you know, other generation selects figures get this option. And you could pop it out to put a Prime Master in there, or pop out the top of the hand to put a Prime Master in there. You can also attach weapons to the top of the hand, like that. That's a really neat change. I like that quite a bit. And I wish Hasbro offered different colors of these fists and hands so we could buy them for, you know, the other Combiner Wars. Now, I just have to say, I absolutely adore this freaky fish form, the walking coelacanth. I think it's a coelacanth. Is it a coelacanth or is it a piranha? I will check the TF wiki right now. It, so I was correct. Scalar is a coelacanth. And it's a really good looking one. I love the look of this figure. I, I really do. It's, it's cool. Okay, now, take the crustacean rifles off. Two rifles. We'll put them off to the side for right now. Some issues with this beast. The biggest issue is this left leg. Way too loose. So loose that it can't even hold up its own weight. Right leg, no problem. Other issue, tail, little too loose. As soon as you put any pressure on it, it flips around like this. So this is going to form a weapon in the robot mode, but it just flips around. Those are the only problems I have with the figure. Posability wise in fish mode, it's, it's a fish, so meter your expectations. Mouth does open and close. Front arms do move and swivel, or I should say they're on a pin that moves. Legs flip around and then have in and out articulation, and ankles have articulation, and then the tail spins! So that's it for the posability. You can get the... If, if that other joint was stronger, you can actually get him posing, like looking up and shooting things, or have him posing down and nomming on some Autobots. As it stands right now, because that loose joint in the back, he kind of has to walk on all fours. Transformation for our Sushi Boy here is pretty darn easy. If you've transformed any of the figures from the Combiner Wars line or anything from Abominus's line, you know how this is going to go, roughly. Start off with, come to the back and push up on the tail and put that off to the side. Then come to the top of the dorsal fin and pull it all the way forward. Then reach behind that fin and flip out the legs and fold them all the way out. Then come down to the sides and we will peg in the feet for the fish mode. And there are little peg holes inside the knees and they peg right in. And then we can stand this bad boy up. Now with the figure stood up, we turn the figure around and take the front fins, and I like to just fold them back towards the head, and then we could grab the entire fish head and unpeg it. For now, we just want to lean it all the way back and on these multiple one, two, three, four hinges, just all the way away from the figure. Then we take the arms and fold the arms out and flip out the fists from inside the forearms, and then just pose the arms correctly. And then we could grab the head, and flip the head around, and then we could bring the fish bit, or fish head, back up and just get it kind of resting on his backpack. And I haven't really found a good way to peg this in, other than it doesn't peg in. There are these pegs right here behind the shoulders, and just get the back or the inside of the jaw to rest on that, on that spot, or rest on those pegs, and it's really the best I've been able to do. And... There we have Scalor, or Gulf, if you will. 
So before we continue, I do want to show you the directions. These are the Japanese directions because this is a Takara figure. You can see that is the backpack or the giant fish head, and this is how you're supposed to get the hinges done. And it really doesn't matter all that much. Yes, having it this or getting it nice and tight and up like this does make it a little more... I don't know, sturdy in the way it sits on the back, but the way I had it, it works just fine either way. As long as you can get that fish head onto those little pegs on his backpack, you're fine. Now the base robot mode is pretty darn cool. I, I like it a lot. I think it works pretty well. It's kind of off pink, not white, and not that weird bright pink that the rest of the figures or what I remember the original Seacons being. It's just kind of off pink and it works. It, it works well. Face sculpt is pretty darn good and reminds me of the G1 aesthetic. In terms of posability, head is on a swivel. Then there is a hinge joint in the shoulder with a ball joint on the outside actually connecting to the arm. Ball joint in the elbow, no fist articulation. Torso articulation, very similar to all the other Combiner Wars figures. And then we have your standard Combiner Wars leg. Ball joint, swivel, knee bend, and then that's about it. There is no foot articulation. The only real articulation in the feet is from the, you know, fish mode. Which, yeah, I kind of left the feet pointing straight out, but you can also fold them up and they act as a, as a secondary heel for the figure. Now back to the tail fin, turn it around, and we've got a gun that he can wield in robot mode. Yeah, that's kind of intimidating. It looks more like a giant club than a gun. One thing I have noticed is that the wrist joints, uh, specifically the pins, or not joints, I should say the pins, are actually not that strong. So I have noticed when I'm trying to put guns into his hands, they just have a tendency to collapse, especially when you try to put the sword in his hand. Um, yeah, this thing is not meant to be wielded in robot mode, I don't believe. Uh, these little pieces that are sticking off the bottom just get in the way when you try to get him to hold it. And then if you turn it around, well, that sure doesn't look good. And then when you try to have him hold the weapon as a pointing, you could just, or like a bayonet, you could just barely get it into a fist before the handle here hits the back. So I haven't really figured out a way to wield this thing in robot mode well, so I just don't bother. The gun, again, as I said, a little too heavy for the arms. Uh, this figure is cool, but the ball joints suffer a little bit. They could use a little bit more tightening, and especially, and the pins in the knees could use a little bit more tightening. Now, before you say, oh, Balch, you got another bad figure. What's with the QC issues? This isn't my figure. This is Grimm's figure. So don't hold that one against me. <laughs> now, before we start talking about his combined mode parts, want to cover the different points where you can combine or add weapons to him. Like other Combiner Wars, you can give him the Baby Bjorn chest. He has a point right here under the coelacanth's mouth. The back of the fish head has two points, one on either side. I was hoping that the forearms had a point of combination or pegging in, but nope. And that's about it. So really, there aren't that many places you can weapon him up, which is a shame. So let's go ahead and get into the limb modes. First, we're going to take the forearms. We're going to start off with the foot first. Take the forearms, fold them up into the, into the, take the fists and fold them into the forearms. Take the head and flip it back so you get the pegs sticking up. And then open up the legs, which is actually harder to do than you might think. And then the legs will collapse in like that and we just get him collapsed up like that next for the shoulders according to the directions you just kind of push the arms in and just kind of lean them back like this and then for the fish fins take them and fold them all the way back like that and that's pretty much it according to the directions oh the directions do have you put the feet flat like this so yeah that's uh that's pretty much your fish foot mode now the way the feet actually work is we take the fist and open it up and then we peg it into these toes that come with uh the turtle or turtler as he is known in japan and uh snap trap here in the u.s so you get these giant feet 
And then that's what he ends up with as a foot. Now for the R mode, as you might suspect, it's very similar to the robot mode, just with a few little changes. All I've done is extend the legs out of the fish mode or out of the foot mode, fold the combiner port so it's facing down, and then the arms, there are supposedly peg. Then next for the arms, open up the arm, there are these pegs right back here under the bottom of the fish head, and those will actually peg into these peg holes on the inside of the arms. So we have to get the arms situated so that they can peg into those peg holes. Now the directions say that you're just supposed to fold the arms back and peg everything in. It doesn't always work because sometimes it's really hard to see what you're doing even with even if you have a lot of light because even if you have the lot of light it's really difficult to see what you're doing sometimes so uh, there we go this is the most fiddly part of any of his transformations is getting these dang things plugged in come on get in there all right and then we simply turn the legs and attach a fist, depending on which arm you want him to be. So we'll, in this instance, we'll make him the left arm. And there we go. That's all she wrote. Now for the weapon mode. So we kind of sort of return him to his foot mode, and then we take the head or the combiner port and face it down, then take the arms and point them straight behind the back such that the top of the fists are pointing towards the back of the figure. And then what's going to happen is the cannon here will actually get pegged into one of these and then will sit in the back of the, of the mode kind of like this, just kind of free forming, free, bleh, free forming sitting here. So yeah, the gun doesn't actually peg into the hands, as you can see in this Takara picture. It actually pegs into the back of the head of the fish mode. The directions are not clear on this, and I just misinterpreted them completely. But this, as you can see, works a lot better. We now return you to your regularly scheduled review. Next, we take these blue cannons and combine them like that. And then they will peg in to the bottom of the fish foot. And that's pretty much it. So then we can get him on a stand, quote unquote, by flattening out the fist, popping out the middle, and then this will just sit right here. And that is our fish weapon mode. So he can make his own battery arsenal turret thing. I like our blue and pink fish boy. I, I do. I think this is a fun figure. It's got some flaws, but overall it's pretty fun and kind of kooky. And I can get behind kooky, especially in 2020. We, uh, we need more of these. So I've got some more fish that I'm going to be reviewing here in a, couple of, in a couple of videos. So please be sure to stay subscribed to my channel to follow me and my fish adventures. Before we go, I do want to mention that, yes, there is a way to peg the sword component into the fish mode. You just have to have the head of the robot mode pointing down, and then you could flip out that little chest piece and peg the bottom in like this. Though, honestly... I'm just going to leave it off to the side. I don't really need it sticking out of the butt of my fish robot. So folks, be sure to let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. This video is for collectors only and for ages 13 and up. Oh, and before we go, just be sure to follow the link down in my description to my Patreon. For $2 a month, you can help me keep the lights on and keep these video reviews coming. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. One last thing. I keep forgetting about this. At the time of this video, 
God Neptune, a box set of the original Beast Wars second God Neptune has been announced. So that figure is also available for pre-order up on the Hasbro Pulse. Again, thank you so much to Grimlock and Miss My Good Buddy for lending me his fish friends so I can review them. You can follow me on Twitter at BaltMatrix.com, and you can follow my good friend Grimlockimus at the Chrome Tyranno. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.